Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today we are using A3 watercolour A3 watercolour paper, 300 GSM and a big black marker, which is one centimetre in width with a chisel tip and it is permanent. And we're using it to start an abstract art painting. So I've been doing a lot of this on the gel plate recently and I thought it would be interesting to see if there's anything, you know when you go back to the paper, so we're using a different substrate and um, just to see how my kind of thought processes for on the gel plate transfer on to the paper. I 100% believe it was much easier to start with this black marker because you get a lot of return for very little effort. So we've got a really strong image on the page right at the start. So we've got something to work with and work around. The downside I will say is that it did stay dominant throughout the picture, which is fine. I kind of knew that when I was going into it, but it's not something that you can use every time. I think next time I do this as well, I'll be a bit more thoughtful about the placement of the black lines um, before I actually <laughs> use the big giant marker on the paper. So I think having some composition sketches before I start would actually have, um, I think it would have made this a, a I was really happy with the outcome, but I think it would have made it even better. <laughs> so this is the Kuretake um, watercolours, the Art Nouveau set. Um, and this is saffron yellow and it is a beautiful yellow. It's like, it's like the sunshine. <laughs> so a lot of this is, you know, what I have been doing the jelly plate recently. And I'm kind of, I'm not, I'm slightly mimicking the black lines that are there. I'm basically using the sort of black shape that's been created as, I'm almost like surrounding the black shape with the different watercolours. So as if this is sort of ornaments or decorations that are hanging from the black shape is kind of how I think of it. It's quite industrial looking with the big black marker at the start, isn't it? I like the way as well when the watercolours sit on top of the black, it does slightly change it when you get a thicker, when you have a thicker, a less watery version of the watercolour. <laughs> when your paintbrush is a bit drier. So these colours, that was um, saffron yellow, Mars yellow, which to me looks like quinacridone gold. And this is, um, I want to say ecru beige or flax beige. I will list the colours that I've used in the description below. I basically use the watercolours, some heavy body acrylic paints, an oil pastel, a soft pastel, and Posca pens. I'm sure that's everything, but like I say, I will list it. So, I'm not doing this painting with any sort of, like, thinking about how I want it to be, if I want it to be soft, if I want it to be aggressive, if I want it to convey a certain type, type of emotion, for it to have lots of movement. This really is kind of practice. Um, although at the end, I do feel that it's got a lot of flow in it and it does look like it's got a rhythmical kind of dancing, um, light-footed movement to it. Um... And I don't know whether or not having the strong black shapes and the white shapes that I add in as well help to 
you know, because that gives it an opposite. I don't know whether or not that actually made it look a bit more sort of light, light and um, flowing than it would have done without these strong shapes. It's all practice and experimentation and investigating and sort of seeing <sighs> something that you're doing that kind of comes up with a result. So this is blue-grey. So the palette overall is a kind of purple-yellow. However, we do have some sort of blues and oranges there as well. And what I do with, with these paints as well, and I don't know whether or not I do this because it's kind of something that I know creates a bit of balance and whether I should actually maybe think of other ways to do it. But I try and sort of have bits of the colour spread over the page. You know, because just to balance it. So we've got quite a thick, strong, solid blue at the top right and then on this left kind of vertical it's very wishy-washy and you know it's it's got a barely there look to it I'm always thinking about how to keep the picture you know cohesive and creating balance I think they're always foremost in my mind with any painting that I do is the kind of stability of it um I don't know if I should be thinking of other things you know as as just as important when I'm doing it I also use the black and white filter on my phone a lot because value is considered to be the strongest element that pulls your eye. So I'm always checking the balance of my, you know, the, the black and white tones of the colours. It's a lovely shade of blue. This Kuretake Art Nouveau set is, it, it's just lovely. It says that, did this say that or did I hear it? I think if you use it very thickly, it can it can behave a bit like gouache, but don't quote me on it. <laughs> so I obviously have drying time in here and what I do is I put on a kind of, I spin the video. <laughs> I just did it um, about 30 seconds ago. I spin the video to let you know that that's a bit of a drying time. I also, this is a full process video, so everything I do is on the video. Um, but times when I, you know, change the pen or I wet the brush, dry the brush, get different paint. And the drying time, time obviously, um, is not included. But I do try to show you as much of the process as possible, just so you can follow along if you want to. Um, and also so that you can say, well, I would have done this a bit differently and this is an idea to try something different. Um, because my whole goal of this is is to learn. I want to I want to be the best artist I can. Um when I say the best artist I can, what I mean as in my own style, I don't mean being the best drawer. I just mean, I want to convey what I want to convey, but there's some certain art rules that I want to know because I know that will only make my art better. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. So I'm also using... Um, quite thick chisel tipped Posca pens in black and white and what I'm doing here is I find that it's the same with the big paint brushes and the bigger pens that I much prefer the edges of the lines and the shapes that are created with the bigger tools because they're just a bit more rough ready 
And I, I think they look, they're much easier to make more abstract and I think they convey more because like that black, on the top left-hand side, that black line going through the white kind of um, horseshoe shape, because I made that with the big black marker, I just feel it's got a lot more edgy, edginess to it than it would be with like one the size of this white pen I'm using just now. I just don't have a white permanent marker <laughs> that's bigger. So just now I think this is looking a bit like um, a sort of fantasy a sort of skull because with the wee white blocks drawn in, it does look a bit like teeth and the square looks a bit like an eye. So we're now using, this is another watercolour, I'm not sure what colour it is. I will tell you in the description. I do like these circles. These are I do see these quite a lot in other people's artwork. Um, but they do have a nice loose quality to them. And I like the way that they're very abstract. But they help, they sort of contain colour for you. So you can make them a bit more of a kind of stronger feature. So I will say, the top half of this painting caused me a lot more problems than the bottom half. Especially the top left and the middle top. <laughs> Everything above that, that black, the black shapes were problematic. <laughs> but we solved it in the end. But I will say that a lot of the time... Doing this, the start of the painting is much less time consuming than adding in the details and fixing parts that you think, oh, wish I hadn't done that. But then you did it for a reason. Um, if you'd felt it was finished as it was, you wouldn't have done it in the first place. And I always think that it's the fixing of these bits that you're not happy with that actually make the painting more interesting. Now, th these purple loops at the bottom right that I'm drawing just now, they were daft. Do you know, they're very stylized and it's a small paintbrush and they just, they look silly. <laughs> I, I thought it would be like, you know, it would be like a strong shape, but it's not, it's just a bit, um, it's a bit whimsical looking and it, it doesn't fit. Do you know what it does? To me, the other shapes on this page look quite natural and they look man-made. That's how that feels to me. Like decorative, not even man-made. They look like they're there to provide decoration, whereas the other parts of the painting look like it could be something functional. So this is heavy body titanium white and that purple watercolour that I used, I mixed a little bit of that in just a couple of drops out of the pan I mix that in with that white just to give it a very very subtle lilac-y grey tone to it and I must say I think it actually it worked very well. Now this is I use this towel a lot for trying to blend out the harsh edges and it's not something that I've done before in the paper that I'm aware of. And I think I was doing it subconsciously because I'd been doing it a lot on the gel plate. And so it's interesting to see that's one thing that has improved my art from the gel plate. As long as I don't become too reliant on the towel and I still do other ways to blend. Um, but it, it was nice to notice that I, you know, had brought that over from, from doing this on the gel plate. I'm going to need to try other substrates and see how I, what I do to try and make things happen so that I can then bring that back to the paper or the canvas as well. So I'm liking this because what happens as well is the watercolour. The watercolours, most of them are dry now, but if I rub hard enough and use wet enough paint, the colours will kind of 
seep into the white and I think that's quite nice. I like that. It just adds another another sort of area of interest and cohesion as well. You don't want it's like it's good having the black and the white because it's given me something very strong to work from and I think it made my job easier overall but it you want varieties of it you don't want just jet black and whatever the equivalent of white is <laughs> jet white so a lot of this is like a dance between making the lines and the shapes quite structured and then making them quite blurry and I think that's what adds depth and that's what you're kind of layering is as well. I do find myself repeating myself a lot. Um, and again, that's something I do often. And, you know, if anybody's got any other ideas on, on a different way to do that or a different way to create, you know, depth and stuff, please let me know. So I like this little block of towers. Um, block of towers? Tower of blocks that I made here. Um, but later on, I add them in to, on the right hand side as well, a bigger version of them. And it was too much. It didn't look good. Because in my mind, I was thinking of threes. However, the teeth on the kind of skull actually is probably like a third set of blocks. So this is heavy body, titanium buff. Yellow ochre and Windsor violet. And so these, I'm using these as my kind of main colours. So this is where I do this little tower of blocks. Sorry, it's not little, it's quite massive. I don't know what possessed me. It seemed a good idea at the time. Um... But at the end of the day, it does help shape the picture and things do build from there. Again, I'm using a small paintbrush. Whenever I use a small paintbrush, I'm never happy. wonder if it's too tidy and not messy enough. Maybe that's what it is. The titanium buff and the yellow ochre make quite a nice light tan colour. Do you know, I wish I'd left it like this. I think this is quite interesting, that shape. I'm not sure it, how well it fits into the picture. It's got a human look to it, doesn't it? I like using the paint, you know, when the brush is very wet or when it's very dry as well. I like the different um, textures you get with it. And it also moves differently. You can be a lot rougher with it when it's dry because it doesn't move as far. And you have to kind of encourage it to move. Whereas when it's wet, you're, it's more about trying to contain it a bit. <laughs> So again, that's me just, this yellow ochre and titanium buff mixture. This is me just trying to spread it about the page a wee bit so that it's, you know, it's balanced. A china marker, that's the other thing I used. A china marker or a grease pencil. So this is just titanium buff on its own. I do like when you see the layers from underneath coming through. Even though that's an opaque paint, the layers underneath are strong enough to still show through. But subtly. So this is me in the the disaster upper left corner it turns out well in the end that is Windsor Violet mixed in with titanium buff 
and it's very similar to that purple watercolour I was using earlier on. Do you know, I think next time I do this and I start with the big black marker, which will probably be the next time I do a painting, I think what I would do is I would just keep it to lines and I wouldn't fill in um, parts of it because I think on that upper left corner where I am just now, I think filling that in um, limited my choices. And also, I think maybe a lot of what I'm doing is trying to break that up, that dense black area up. So while I may want that, I would wait until nearer the end to fill it in. So this is another thing I do as well. Obviously, the black pen work that we put on at the beginning is is it's getting slightly changed, as in, you know, the actual lines themselves. We're getting paint and um, edges of other shapes and other shapes on top of it. So what I do is intermittently, probably when it feels like it's, I'm not sure what to do next, is... I'm coming back in and I'm trying to bring the black, some of the black back to the front again. So I've got that strong shape to then work around again. But not just recreating what was there to begin with. See there, I've opened up that black a bit now and I do think it looks better. And I open it up more at the end as well. So I suppose I'm trying to find a balance between the, sh the the strong, sharp edges and the blurred edges and try to find the balance between having the strong black being at the front and being at the back. Is that what it's all about? What else should you be thinking about when you're doing it? You know, What other rules should you be thinking about so there's b balance in your painting, obviously. There's your composition. Your colours. Have adding variety. I'm always kind of thinking about that. Trying to vary. Um, you know, and trying to make like opposites. So if I've got something sharp, I'm trying to have something loose but then it's about the balance of that but it's also about getting the balance right to convey the message you want to convey so if anybody's got any other opinion on that please tell me <laughs> so this is just titanium white and I am trying to cover up some of that black because it's too strong and this top section um there was too much going on in it and I needed some quieter areas so the bottom right corner of the painting where the kind of swirly knotted black china marker line is is a kind of quiet area as well And I think at the end of the painting, this that that top section ended up quite busy again, quite strong. And I actually think that maybe just stopping there with it, or somewhere around about there, might have been helpful, because this it ended up so that the only quiet area was sort of down the far left side. And in the bottom left corner, that quadrant in the bottom left. It's interesting because I didn't pick on up on that at the time. It's only when I'm kind of watching it back and analysing it that I'm noticing this. That's another thing that I picked up from using the gel plate. A kind of damp tissue or a tissue on, you know, quite a thick, a dry tissue on the quite thick 
heavy body paint to blend it out. Also, um, spraying some water as well. I did that earlier, I noticed too. That was another thing from the gel plate. It's quite nice bringing other elements in that you wouldn't normally have done before. These circles are my favourite, it has to be said. But they do feel a bit... I don't know. They look a bit like a caterpillar. <laughs> You know, I've probably just put the black and white filter on this um, and that's why I'm going in with so much white. Do you know, I should do a video of that actually. And then people can tell me, that's how you balance it. I would have done this after seeing it in black and white. I do like how you can blend the watercolours with the titanium the white titanium white it's like you know with the oil pastels when you're using the colored oil pastels and then you go over the top with a much lighter color or the white it helps to blend them that's that's how i'm finding this um white acrylic paint on top of the watercolors i like this I actually did this a few times um, before I was happy with it. Um, it's just mimicking the kind of China marker black lines. But it's different because it's bringing through what was underneath the white paint. So that's the Windsor Violet on its own without other colours mixed in. It's actually quite, it's not very transparent, it's semi-opaque maybe. That's how I find it um, when I use it. And I think adding this in, going over that, you know, one aspect of that knotted line with that Windsor Violet actually helped link the two shapes together that's me just scraping some of it off with a palette knife it was a bit too dry around here to scrape any of it off it just complements the kind of roughness of the other areas and it makes the line less it makes the edges of the line less sharp. It is a lovely colour. So I suppose after using the white acrylic paint to do a lot of blending with the watercolours, it was maybe just too soft looking overall, which is why I'm coming back in and I'm adding a lot of texture into smaller areas. Another gel plate thing, dabbing off excess paint with the towel. Oh, right, this is a disaster. <laughs> this... I actually have just left in each mistake of me trying to rectify this for you. <laughs> disaster. Disaster. Bigger disaster. Bigger disaster. Mm. Nearly as big disaster, I would call it. So, I've mixed together some Windsor Violet and Titanium Buff and White.
So obviously I realised that it needed something up there. It just didn't need what I did to it. But it's all about building the picture. And so while I didn't want what I did, it came on and gave us this. Another layer to the painting. I do tend to make the smaller areas like that I've made that quite sharp and solid, that little square at the bottom. Whereas the line on the left side is a bit more meandering. I changed my mind on that, I'm sure. It's like a sort of half fish, half person with a tail. Now it doesn't have a tail, it's got, it's like a snail with a big head and a small shell. Again, I'm just bringing that into the, you know, while it is not overwhelming in the circles, I'm just trying to add a hint of it in. So this is Quinacridone Gold High Flow Acrylic Paint and it's very similar to that Mars Yellow Watercolour. And I went over that um, disaster zone quite nicely. This is very transparent, the high flow paints are very transparent but they're very pigmented so it's such a strong colour but it's like a film rather than a layer it's lovely it dries very quickly I'm not even sure I'm able to buff that out with the towel I did manage a wee bit So this that I'm using to create the lines with is it's called a scoring tool and I got three of them for £2 in the range in the UK. They are cheap but I use it all the time. I think it's great. So I'm just, this is quite blocky. Also the high flow acrylic ink, because it creates like this film effect it's just very solid looking and it needs kind of it needs broken up basically it needs roughed up it's like a lovely smooth film on top but it doesn't fit in with the picture and it's also got a shine to it as well so I kind of go back and forth putting the lines in and then kind of painting over them. This might just be water or it might have some quinacridone gold on it as well. Now I'm just spraying this to create some drips coming down from there. Just to bring that, that quinacridone gold from being solid to kind of It kind of matches in with the circles because I feel the circles look like they're kind of hanging and they look like if there was a wind they would move and these drips I felt created a similar effect. So up the top it is quite it's quite solid and then at the bottom we've got this tangled knot then we've got the drips and then we've got those circles and I do feel the bottom looks, I do, it's strong but it's got a vulnerability to it whereas the top section does look very solid as if it's there to support these objects that are hanging from it if that makes sense. So I'm just going back in to add a bit more structure to the white and black areas again.
That is children playing outside. Can you hear them screaming? Do you know what you don't see? You don't see the amount of time that I take making decisions. It looks like I just go from one area to another. Honestly, if I were to leave in the decision-making time, this would be a, a four-hour video. That's not including drying time as well. I'm trying to make these look... I think they looked quite organic to begin with. They didn't they weren't too circular. Um and I feel like they've just got a wee bit more structured looking as I've went along, but I do break it up. It's kind of like defining what parts of this are the important um parts of it not the pet picture I mean of the black and the white areas so I knew I had to break that up and I could have put white back over it actually. See if I, I could have, but I didn't. I did this anyway. And to me, it looks a bit like a door. However, I think it also, see because it's kind of, it's got a slight diagonal to it. So it's a bit wonky looking. I think it enhances the kind of diagonal shape of the big black shapes either side of it and I think this is what gives it the effect that to me it looks like it's 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 dancing I think this shape here for all I feel it's too strong for the picture overall I do think that it definitely brought a lightness to the picture and it brought movement to the picture that wasn't there before it probably ties up the kind of looser shapes at the bottom that are kind of, you know, long and flowy and intersecting with each other. It probably ties them up with the stronger shapes at the top. The stronger, more solid shapes that don't look like they move at all. I think it makes it look like the whole structure is, is together as one, it's one unit and it moves together, it kind of swaying. That's the vibe I get from it since I put that middle rectangle in. So this is a white soft pastel. It's Sennelier, so it it's very good. It's very good. And what I'm doing is I should have used paint for this, but I thought for quickness, I'll use the soft pastel just to give a bit of a slight blur to the white lines to just, to make them a bit less solid. Um, I should have really used the paint. It would have looked. I think it would have been a much higher quality if I'd used the paint rather than just pushing the the pastel dust around. <laughs> But then, it's just, it's all about, um, I thought the, the soft pastel, it would have just added a different type of blending to it. And it did. I do think that middle rectangle has softened up the whole painting. And I really like it. It 
was a mixture of yellow ochre and titanium buff I put in that middle rectangle. So once we've defined these black lines, I'm pretty sure that's the painting finished. I'm going to come up with some composition sketches so that I can then, when I put the black marker down on the paper at the beginning, I've got a better structure to work with. Although I do like the unknown and I do like where this ended up. Probably would have been less complicated and I would have led, made less mistakes if I'd had something to work off, but then would we have ended up with this? So that black Posca pen's still a bit wet, so I end up getting that some of that blended in with the drips, and I think it works well because it brings a bit more of the black down the bottom in that looser way that the bottom is. I do do it a few times. Just some final details. It's funny having the a strong feature right in the middle of the painting. That's something I I usually consciously avoid. So there we have it. Oh, listen! I hope you enjoyed, and thanks very much for watching. It's quite satisfying peeling off the masking tape, isn't it? Although it was only there to actually hold it down onto the plastic sheet to keep it still. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you soon and take care. Bye!